she's apologized and shown remorse and she suggested couples counseling but I don't know if therapy can fix this can any amount of talking undo the damage how am I supposed to real be rebuild a marriage when I feel like it's built on a lie welcome to the hallowed halls of magic's monologue I'm magic your curator of personal growth and the sage keeper of the keys to today's tome of wisdom and knowledge today's video my wife cheated on me and I didn't see it coming but before embarking on the expedition to knowledge and many people's very poor life choices I thank you for the thumbs up you've given me the subscribe and the smacking of the bell to be instantly notified of new videos. Let's begin the journey. In this letter from a subscriber, he asked me for my advice on what he should do. Gentlemen, this is an excellent video of what happens when you give a woman too much certainty and what you must do when you find out you've been deceived. So watch, listen, and learn, and drop a comment in the comment section when you're done. Dear Magic, I don't know where to begin. I'm 25, call me Joe, and my wife Jessica, 31. We've only been married for six months, but it feels like my entire world has been turned upside down. Before the wedding, we'd been together for three years. I thought I knew her well, or at least I believe I did. Now, I'm not so sure. Slap to the back of the head. Guys, in today's world, you need to date for a good four to five years to get to know someone. Some people are really good actresses and actors. However, only someone pathological can maintain a lie about who they are over such a long period of time. You want to share trips with her, fly with her, put them under stressful life circumstances to see how they handle things, and it gives you a really good glimpse into who they are. Three years in today's world is not long enough. It started a few months before we got married. She took a girl's trip, and during that time, she admitted she went on a date with a friend. She swore nothing happened beyond that, just dinner and nothing physical. Slap to the back of the head. How many times do I have to say this? Girls' trips and girls' night out often lead to trouble. And guys writing me about their cheating wives and girlfriends, this is a reoccurring theme. Trips where you are legitimately invited and you refuse, that's one thing. And that's okay if you so decide that. However, trips with your significant other, that's the ones that should be taken. If you choose not to go on the trip, I would say be vigilant and look for any behavior changers. As Ronald Reagan says, It's still trust, but verify. It's still play, but cut the cards. The next issue. The word friend in the male universe has one meaning, and in the female universe, it means something completely different. Get this through your head, guys. When a man says a friend, the majority of the time, that's exactly what we mean. However, with a woman, eh, not so much. This is why they go crazy when you talk about a female friend who is a friend and nothing more. Yet, in the female mind, she's just a friend, is your potential monkey branch replacement for her. Most women project their evolutionary behavior onto men not understanding it is their behavior pattern not ours 
Never forget, more marriages and relationships have been broken up by he's just a friend. I was angry and upset for a few days, but we talked about it, and I let it go. We moved on, or so I thought, and we got married shortly thereafter. Slap to the back of the head. That is where you screwed up. She disrespected you. You felt it on an instinctive level. Your gut told you there was something wrong and you ignored it. Always trust your gut. Chances are that girl's trip and date happened because she knew she had you. Sadly, once you put a ring on it, this is when many women start to pull crap they wouldn't dream of prior. Often, this is referred to as giving a woman too much certainty. She never would have pulled that crap on Chad and Tyrone because she knows they would have kicked her to the curb in a heartbeat. Don't forget here, guys. She was 30, the number which invokes a sense of I've got to get married and have my special day desperation in many women. But now, eight months later, into our marriage, she dropped a bombshell. Out of the blue, she sends me a text saying there's something she needs to confess. Instantly, my heart felt like it fell out of my chest. And that gut-wrenching feeling when you just know something's about to shatter your world. Yeah, that. She admitted that during her trip, not only did she go out with the friend, but they went back to her hotel and had S-word fun. He stayed the night. She said she hadn't spoken to him since, but honestly, I don't even know if I can believe that. Once someone breaks your trust like that, how are you supposed to know what's real and what's not? Believe her? Believe her? Fun fact, boys and girls, did you know 100% of cheaters are liars? So no, at no point you can believe anything she says. This is just a wise policy to take. Here's the thing. I love her. I want her to stay. And I want to stay with her. Slap to the back of the head. I respect you love her. However, you can't stay with her. It's over. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Nine times out of ten, she will do this to you again because she will see you as a weak man on your part. And women do not respect weak men. They will make you their bitch and then use you for your resources, all the while holding a secret undercurrent of contempt for you. But I can't stop imagining her with this guy. Every time I close my eyes, it's like a slideshow of betrayal playing in my head. I can't sleep. I can't focus at work. Every part of me feels consumed by this image of her being intimate with someone else. Well, this is true. For most men, you will never get this out of your head and you will never see her the same. It's like a primal evolutionary switch flips in our lizard brain. Once it does, it's over for us. She's apologized and shown remorse and she suggested couples counseling, but I don't know if therapy can fix this. Can any amount of talking undo the damage? How am I supposed to rebuild our marriage when it feels like it was built on a lie? Don't be fooled. She is sorry she got caught and the suggestion of couples counseling is just a smokescreen to keep you and the certainty of your resources in the here and now for her with the hope she can convince the counselor how she is not accountable for her behavior or decisions and somehow make it 
your fault. And it's not just the act of cheating that haunts me, it's the deception. For months, I lived in ignorance, thinking everything was fine. I wonder now how many other things she has hidden from me. Was this an isolated mistake or part of a bigger pattern I've been blind to? Dude, this was not a mistake. It was not a it didn't mean anything or it was just sex. This was a premeditated and calculated act of contempt and disrespect. If anything, grasp this concept. This is how she sees you. Women do not cheat on men they see as alpha, someone whose attention and validation they not only crave but are afraid to lose. No, they cheat on the nice beta provider like you. Understand, this is not your fault. This is and was a conscious choice on her part. People talk about cheating behavior, and in hindsight, I guess the signs were there. She started acting distant. Her phone was suddenly always in sight, and she seemed more guarded. I convinced myself it was just wedding stress. It's crazy how easy it is to ignore the red flags when you're in love, right? Now I keep replaying every moment wondering if I missed something else. Yes, you did. You were her second choice because the guy she wanted didn't want to commit to her. Congratulations, you were to be her starter husband. The guy she married for what you could provide while well, she has Chad and Tyrone, aka the ex, who got away on the side or on the down low if you prefer. I'm torn. Part of me wants to forgive her, to find a way to move forward, but another part of me is just angry, hurt, betrayed. I've read stories about other guys in my situation and it's always the same cycle. Trust gets shattered. Then they try to patch things up, but it's never quite the same. How do you ever trust someone again after something like this? How do I stop myself from checking her phone, questioning her every move? Is that any way to live? I guess what I'm really asking is, can people really move on from something like this? Is there a way to truly forgive, or am I just delaying the inevitable? I don't want to spend my life haunted by this, but right now, I can't see a way out. Any advice would mean the world to me because right now, I'm drowning. Thanks for your channel, Joe. Okay, first off, Joe. I'm so sorry this has happened to you, my brother. Look, here's what I think. First issue, you dodged a freaking bullet, so celebrate that. Your marriage is over, and I'll come back to why in a moment. A study by Amato and Rogers in 1997 titled, A Longitudinal Study of Marital Problems and Subsequent Divorce found that female infidelity is more strongly associated with divorce compared to male infidelity. The research noted that when women cheat, divorce is about 60% more likely than when men cheat. Female infidelity tends to have more emotional involvement than male infidelity which makes the repair more difficult. Women are often seen as more likely to leave the marriage after infidelity compared to a man or men in general. Studies suggest that the psychological impact on men are more likely to feel sexually betrayed and less likely to forgive female infidelity, which contributes to the higher failure rate of marriage counseling and recovery from marriage counseling, the rate being the highest failure. 
according to Buss and Shackelford in 1997, from vigilance to violence, mate retention tactics in married couples. Six months far too early, brother, far too soon in the life of a marriage to already be wrestling with betrayal, with that hollow ache gnawing in your, at your soul. Most men, they get a few years, a stress of bliss, of ignorant peace before their wife pulls the curtain back on infidelity. You didn't even get that. She kept her secret tucked away, cradled in the shadows until after the vows, until after the dress was worn, the cake cut, the photos taken, her special day, not yours, but hers. And why? Because she knew, she knew the game. She played the long con, waited just long enough for that ring to seal the deal, knowing you'd be far more inclined to forgive once the ink was dry on the marriage certificate. It wasn't just cheating, no. It was a manipulation, cold and calculated. She didn't tell you before the wedding because she feared you might disappear. Now, you're dancing to her tune, justifying having a forgiving heart and all, not seeing the cracks in the foundation she's already laid. If you forgive her now, you might as well hand her the keys to your peace, your sanity, and your future. She'll know she can push the boundaries again, dip her toes into those same dark waters again, and you'll be there like a trained monkey, her bitch, ready to smooth it over to brush it under the rug. Sooner or later, my brother, she'll walk away, divorce papers in hand, taking half of what you've built with her, your money, your house, and your stability. But here's the silver lining. You're lucky. Six months. That's all. Six months into this union, and the truth has already slithered out. You have a chance now at a clean exit. A chance to hit the reset button before kids are involved, before your life gets any messier. I would say get an annulment is your way out. A get out of jail free card before the real pain sets in. No alimony, no splitting assets, just freedom. And don't let her control the story, aka the narrative. You take the reins now. Get ahead of it before she spins the narrative and paints you as the villain to her family and friends. Control the narrative, brother. Walk away with your head held high before she takes more than just your trust. If you are one of the unsubscribed viewers, 89.4%, who watch me and find value in my channel, it's time to show it by doing three things. Give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and share this with at least three friends who need to learn from this channel. Confession is good for the soul. Send me your personal relationship stories to share like this gentleman did. Or if you see an article online you think I should cover, send the link to stories at magicsmonologue.com. If you have a moment, drop me a comment below on what you think and then subscribe to my locals, Rumble, Twitter, Getter, or Gab. Through this, you're leading by example, encouraging other men to rise higher, and ensuring you live a life of passion, purpose, and prosperity. If you can't wait for my next new video, then click on one of these now and watch another. Until next time.